Christ. Amen. I'm going to ask you if you would to open your Bibles with me to Matthew chapter 27. I'm going to ask you if you would to stand with me to honor the reading of God's holy word and to give honor to him. I'm going to be reading Matthew 27, 59 through 60, 62 through 66, Mark 16, 1 through 4. Today we celebrate, today we remember, today we understand and know what happened and what took place. 2,000 years ago, when Jesus died, they did not know. The first Easter, the day of resurrection, they wasn't remembering, they wasn't celebrating, they wasn't rejoicing. That morning, they got ready, and their hearts were heavy and saddened because Jesus was dead. The Bible said in Matthew 27, when Joseph had taken the body of Jesus, he wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in a new tomb which he had hewn out of the rock and he rolled a large stone against the door of the tomb and they departed verse 62 and on the next day which followed the day of preparation the chief priests and the Pharisees gathered together to Pilate saying sir we remember while this Jesus was still alive, how that deceiver said, after three days I will rise. Therefore command that the tomb be made secure until the third day. Least his disciples come by night and steal his body away and say to the people, he is risen from the dead. So that the last deception will be worse than the first. And Pilate said to them, you have a guard, go your way and make it as secure as you know how. So they went and they made the tomb secure, sealing, no, listen to this church, sealing the stone, sealing the stone and setting the guard. In Mark chapter 16, verses 1 through 4. Now when the Sabbath had passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, Salome, brought pieces, spices, that they might come and anoint Jesus. Very early in the morning on the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun had risen. And they said amongst themselves, who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? When they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away for it was very large. Father, I thank you today for your word. And I thank you today, Father, for your spirit and your touch and your grace. I'm so thankful that we can stand here today and celebrate our risen Lord and Savior. I'm so thankful for the forgiveness and the mercy and grace you give us. And Father, I pray, let us never forget the sacrifice. Let us never forget the gift you gave to us through your Son, the redemption through his blood. I pray, Father, touch us today and speak to us through your word in Christ Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen and amen and amen. You may be seated. When they came to the tomb, it was a time of loss and hardship. This morning I read the story, something I worked on last night as a devotion. Were you there? Listen to my story. That we were there 
maybe not in the flesh at the time, but it was because of you and I and everyone before and after that Jesus gave his life on Calvary's cross. This week, we celebrated Jesus. We began Palm Sunday when he entered it in to Jerusalem and they cried Hosanna to the king. Monday, he cleansed the temple and returned it to a house of prayer. Tuesday, he showed great faith and talked to his disciples on remembering and operating in their faith. On Wednesday, he began to prepare and done great miracles, getting ready for the final Passover, knowing what was to come. On Thursday evening, he broke bread with them, and the final Passover meal he shared with his disciples. And on Friday morning, around midnight from 12 to 3 a.m., Jesus began to pray in agony in the Garden of Gethsemane. The longest day of his life would begin that day. As he prayed in agony, he would be taken and betrayed by his disciple Judas. The chief priest would come. Others would leave him by himself, and he would stand before a crowd that would mark him and holler crucify him. He would be scourged. They would spit upon him. They would pull chunks of his beard out with their hands. They would slap him and cover his face and slap him again and tell him, prophesy who did it. They would beat upon him. They would take a cat of nine tails, a whip that had nine pieces of leather in it, and in the letter, there would be pieces of stone, pieces of glass, pieces of bone and metal in the ends of it. And they would take it and they would beat his back with 39 stripes and literally rip the flesh from his body. How he could survive the abuse that he would go through was a divine miracle in itself. Beaten beyond belief, abused, spit upon and mocked and laughed at, cursed and jeered. And they would take him out. They would make him walk in shame before everybody down to Dea Velagosa. And they would take him to Calvary's cross, Galgotha. And they would there nail him to an old rugged cross. And as he was on the old rugged cross beating, bruised, bleeding, there he would hang. But yet he would offer up forgiveness for all mankind. His very first words upon the cross were simply, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. And as he would speak these words, he would bring salvation. He would bring salvation to a thief hanging on the cross beside him who would say, Lord, remember me when you come into thy kingdom. And he told the thief, surely this day you will be with me in paradise. Salvation had come. And he would die upon that cross not because of the Roman soldiers, not because of the high priests or the Pharisees or Sadducees, not because of the crowd, but because he would choose to give up the ghost himself. And when he would die, he would be taken down, wrapped up and put into a tomb. By five o'clock on Friday afternoon, the first day, he would be buried in the tomb. Why? He was dead. Everyone knew he was dead. The earth had been darkened, the ground had shaken, the veil in the temple had been written twain. Everyone knew something terrible had taken place that day. They all thought, it's over. This is it. This is the end. And they would put him inside a borrowed tomb, and they would roll a stone in front of it. Not just a little stone. The grooves were cut out into the gray ground in front of the tomb. Then when a stone dropped down in there, it would take a massive amount of strength, men, or equipment to remove that stone. But this was not enough. They would seal the stone. It's been debated over the years. How did they seal it? Some said, well, they sealed it with wax. Some said they sealed it with cement or concrete or mud. We don't know, but we know that it was sealed. And the reason it was sealed is to stop it from ever being opened again. A guard would be set outside to watch over to make sure no one tampered with the stone. Why? Jesus was dead. Everything was over. Everything was done. Everything had been completed. And now sorrow rested upon everybody. Why? Jesus 
is dead, but Sunday was coming. Jesus was finished, but Sunday was coming. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday's coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilified. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denied. But they don't know that Sundays are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sundays come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary, his blood dripping, his body stumbling, and his spirits burdened. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's come. Yes. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning, and evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. Amen. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know. It's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father, left alone and dying. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's coming. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won, sin has conquered, and Satan's just a lie. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard. And a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming. Aren't you glad Sunday is coming? I said, aren't you glad Sunday is coming? The most important thing that happened on Sunday morning, so often time is overlooked in the story of Easter, in the story of Christ. We overlook, we forget and not realize what it is. But it is told throughout the Gospels, and each Gospel tells it and shares the story. But I like the way Mark said it in Mark 16 when he said, And when they came, very early in the morning, of the first day of the week, they came to the tomb when the sun, before the sun had risen. And they said among themselves, Who will roll away the stone from the door of the tomb for us? And as they were coming... Glory to God. They were wondering who would roll the stone away because it was so large. This morning, I want to talk to you about the simple thought, Sunday's coming. The stone 
is rolled away. When you see the stone rolled away, the Bible said that when they looked up, they saw the stone had been rolled away, for it was a very large stone. What did this mean? What did this matter? What did this represent? Why was this so vital? When the story of Christ is one that when you look at it, if you put yourself in the place of the people of that day and age and understand in that time that they were coming to find a stone blocking the way. What were they coming for? They were coming not even knowing how they would get in to anoint the dead body of Jesus Christ. And the stone was a symbol of that finality. The stone was a symbol of the closure of Jesus' life. The stone was a symbol of the end. The stone was the final barrier between them and death. Understand, they knew he was dead. They mourned. They cried. They were fearful. The disciples were hiding, and Mary, his mother, and Mary and Sloan came with the spices to anoint his body because they had not been allowed to do this beforehand, and it was the custom. But even coming, they were mournful and worried. We don't know how we're going to get in there. How will we ever get past the stone that is in the way? How will we ever get past the stone that has blocked and separated us? He's dead. He's not going to understand. It don't matter really if you think about it because he's dead. But how do we get past it? There's a stone of separation that is there. There's a stone that is going to be there that divides us. Oh, it's bad enough that he's dead. It's bad enough that we're mourning because he's gone. But now there's a stone there that's in the way and we cannot get past the stone. I want to tell you, I found out in life that the devil wants to put stones in your life, stones of separation, stones that will cause you to be stopped in your path, stones that will cause you to be hindered, stones that will cause you to keep from going forward, stones that will make it look like a finality is there. I mean, think about it. You're coming up to a place looking for a dead body, and it's a grave, and the stone stone slab is there. You can't get to the body because the stone is in the way. You don't have equipment to move the stone. You don't have the strength to move the stone. Why are you even going? Why will we even be there? Because many had did not, you know why no one else came but just that handful? Because the stone was a symbol of finality. It had been sealed. It had been set there. It had been put there to stop the Christ. Glory to God. And many people thought this is beyond even him. Glory to God. Can I tell you today, church, uh, they didn't realize that Sunday was coming. Uh, they didn't realize that Sunday morning uh, when the sun woke up the earth. Uh, they didn't understand that the caverns of deep were going to open up and give birth. Uh, they didn't understand that the Holy Spirit himself uh, was going to roll that stone away. Uh, and angels were going to sit down uh, in the tomb of Jesus uh, where once the dead was. Uh, the living would be there to proclaim uh, what once separated is there no longer to separate. What once would have stopped you is no longer there to stop you. I've come to tell somebody today uh, what happened those 2,000 years ago is still happening today uh, that my resurrected Lord and Savior is still moving stones uh, out of the way of our lives. Uh, and though there may be things in your life uh, that have separated you from God, and separated you from your family and separated you from life. Maybe there's stones that have hindered you and stopped you from going forward. I've come to tell you, get ready. Sunday's coming. I said, get ready. Sunday's coming. And when Sunday gets there, you may just find that the stone that was a separation for you, God has rolled it out of the way. You see, the first thing you need to understand about this stone was it was a stone of separation. And in Matthew 27, he said, they sealed it. In verse 20, uh, 66, verse 20, chapter 27, verse 66, he said, they sealed the stone, sealing it and setting a guard. Why? It was there to stop. It was there to separate. Listen, the devil in the world has been trying to separate people from God ever since creation. Did you hear what I said? 
did ever since creation. Satan came down in the form of the serpent. He wanted to separate man from God. He wanted to separate Adam and Eve from God. And did he do it? Yes, he did. He caused them to disobey. And what did they do? They went and hid in bushes. Why? They went to hide behind something to separate when God came down in the midst of the garden and said, Adam, Adam, where art thou? And he said, here am I. And he said, why are you hiding? He said, I hid myself because I was naked. Who told you you were naked, Adam? Uh, the woman uh, that you gave me, gave me of the tree of knowledge of good and evil to eat. And he looked at Eve, what have you done? Well, the serpent beguiled me. The serpent, what had happened? They had listened to the enemy and separation had come and there was a division between them and God. And for years, for 4,000 years, uh, God was separated by a curtain, by a wall, by sin. Everything stopped. And when Jesus died on the cross, Satan said, I'm not going to let him out. I'm going to put him in a tomb and I'm going to put a stone there. I'm going to keep him separated from the people. I'll keep him separated from everyone else. And though death was straddling his chest and though every demon in hell was trying to hold him down, on my first Easter morning, honey, I got news for you. He began to move. I can hear the demons crying out. He's moving. And the stone began to shake. And the devil said, hold him. And Satan, and the grave said, I can't hold him any longer. Something's moving the stone. And God rolled back the stone. And when the stone was rolled back, honey, they could walk in. There was no more separation from God and man. Glory to God. I'm going to tell you what, and I'm about to get excited for some of y'all. Because I like the idea of knowing the stone is gone. Hello. You know what is amazing? The disciples didn't break the stone. Mary and, Mar Mary and them didn't dig the stone out. Jesus didn't have to move the stone himself. Honey, the Holy Spirit rolled the stone out of the way. Did you hear what I said? Glory to God. The God moved the stone. God the Father said, let that stone out of the way. My son's about to come out. Glory to God. That's why in Psalms, David said, he's going to rise with healing in his wings. Glory to God. He's not going to have to fight his way out. He's not going to have to struggle. He's not going to have to demand. Oh, glory to God. The Father rolled that stone out of the way. And we now have a right. You know what the writer of Hebrews said in Hebrews chapter 10, verses 19 to 25, I love this. He said, therefore, brethren, having boldness to enter into the holies of holies by the blood of Jesus, by a new and living way, which he consecrated for us through the veil that is his flesh, and having a high priest over the throne of God, let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. He said, let us hold fast the confession of our hope without wavering for he who promised is faithful and let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works uh, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as in the manner of some but exhorting one another and so much more so as we see that day approaching glory to God but listen Apollo said I'm telling you he's already made a way through the veil for us what they didn't know and what they didn't understand on Sunday morning Listen to me. Friday was the day of Passover. They had to get him killed. They had to get him better before 6 o'clock. The Passover meal. All right, listen, they had to have it done because it started the day, of, excuse me, the day of seventh, uh, Sabbath, the day of rest. And they had to get him in the tomb. So when he died on the cross, the ground shook. Lightning blasted through the sky and across to the temple. The veil was rent in twain. Glory to God. What had separated man from God had been taken out of the way and people didn't understand. All they could see was Jesus had died. Yes, he had died. He had died so that we could have access to the Father. He had died so we could be forgiven of our sins. He had died so we could have mercy and grace. He had died so we could be resurrected again into a new life. He had died because he 
had fulfilled the plan of salvation. They didn't understand it. They thought it was over. But honey, on Sunday morning when they got there, I can just see the look on their face when they looked and the stone had been rolled away. Oh, wait a minute. How are we going to get it? I don't know, but the stone's already gone. Can I tell you what, church? I believe some of you today need to realize that God will roll the stones out of your life and give you a way in that you didn't think was there. You think it's over. You think there's a finality there. But God is trying to tell somebody today, just like I rolled that stone away on the day I rose, I'll roll the stones away in your life today. It ain't over until I say it's over. The devil said, I've defeated you. The devil said, you can't be nothing. The devil said, you're a failure. The devil said, it's over for you. Your life is through. The devil said, you messed up. You made a mockery of your life. Look what you've done. Nobody will respect you. Nobody will care about you. Nobody will love you. The devil said, you can forget it. You're done for. But I come to tell you today, get ready. Sunday's coming. God can roll that stone away. God can give you a new day. Honey, I want to tell you, you can walk in alive and renewed today. Amen. See, a lot of times we let the stones get in the way. You know, there's another thing that stone represented. It was a stone, not only a separation, but it was a stone of fear and discouragement. What do you mean, Pastor? I'm so glad you asked. You could hear it in their words. They're talking to each other. They're going to the tomb. Now they're going looking for a dead Savior. Why? They saw him die. They saw him buried. They're fearful. They're discouraged. And Brother Joe, they're going, who's going to get the stone out of the way? We can't do it. And that's discouragement. Why are we even doing this? We can't get in? Why are we even trying? I mean, it's impossible for us to do it. And they were ready to give up and quit. They were talking to themselves. They came there with fear in their heart. They came there with discouragement in their heart. Why? Because that's the way the enemy works. You see, Satan wants to put stones of fear and discouragement in your life. He wants to stop you from being more than what you are now. He wants to stop you from succeeding. Some of you have given up on your dreams. You've given up on your hope. You've given up on your life. Some of you have accepted things in life because the enemy put a big old stone there in the way and said, you can't do it. You never will. You can't be it. You never will. You can't accomplish it. You never will. And you've become discouraged and literally fearful because of it. Listen, I, there's no way I can do this. Why? Because others will stand over there and mock. Others will stand over there and tell you you can't and why you shouldn't. Glory Glory to God, I'm so used to the devil trying to tell me why we can't have church and why we can't succeed and why we can't be blessed and why we can't accomplish more. Glory to God. Listen to me, church. When I came here, I had people that had the audacity to call me up on the telephone and say, I can't believe you're going to that church. Ichabod's been written over that church. The Spirit of God has departed, and it made me angry. I said, devil, you are lie out of hell. You know why? Because I got news for you. The Spirit of God isn't just in one place. The Spirit of God resides in my heart and in my life. And wherever I go, the Spirit of the Lord goes with me. I want to tell you, the devil wants to put a fear. He wants to put discouragement in front of you. And sometimes it's so big, you're going there wondering, who will move the stone for me? I got news for you. You're looking in all the wrong places. Quit looking for a pastor. Quit looking for mom and dad. Quit looking for a husband husband and wife. Quit looking for children. Quit looking for the government. Quit looking for the world. Quit looking for somebody to move your stone. Look up to God. I got news for you. When the time comes, God will move your stone. God will roll your stone away. God will make a way for you. You don't need somebody else. You just need Jesus. God says, I'll remove it. I'll take care of it. I'll fix the glory to God. And I want to tell you, he is more than able to do it. He can move that stone out of the way. I'm getting so excited, I'm shouting my pack off up here. 
Amen. I felt, keep feeling something pull on my head. And I'm going, what in the world's wrong with this thing? I done either broke it or shouted it off. Why? Because I'm excited to know that I don't have to live with fear and discouragement in my life. I don't have to live with fear and discouragement blocking my way. The storm may be bigger than I am. Glory to God. But God is bigger than my storm. Did you hear what I said? I said God is bigger. Come here, Nathan. Come here a minute, buddy. Come here, brother Joe. You know, we don't understand because the enemy blocks something greater than us. You know, the devil blocked the promise with the stone. It wasn't enough that he blocked it with a big stone. He sealed it. And when he sealed it, he put a guard out there in front of it. Come here. And this is kind of what we're like. God, is, the devil wants to put a big stone right in front of us. It's okay. You know, he ain't going to hurt you, I promise. He's a, he's a good Marine. You can't see past it. You can't see over it. And you can't see around it because when you move, he moves it right in front of you. He stays right there so you can't see around. You can't see over. You can't see through. And there's no way you're going to try to go below. Hello? That stone will crush you. That stone of fear and discouragement is bigger than what you are. And when you try to go forward, don't move, Brother Joe. You try to go forward, what's that? What happened? You bounce back a little bit. You, bam. You run it. Don't move, stone. You can't move. You run into it. Bam. You run into the stone, and it knocks you back. And the stone is there. Can I tell you, I, you, I am surprised at the people that want to go around saying, I'm blessed, but yet in their day-to-day -day life, they are walking in fear and discouragement because they've got problems, they've got situations, they've got struggles that are so big blocking them. Man, something's in their life. Their health is bad. Their, 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 their marriage, their job, their children, maybe it's something financially, whatever. There's some great thing that's before them. They can't see around it. They can't see past it. They can't get by it. It's blocking them and it's stopping them. And we're going, God, I'm just, I don't know what to do. And they're discouraged and they're fearful to try because the devil's sitting over there saying, look at that. You can't beat that, buddy. You try, you won't. You ain't getting past that stone. There's no way that's going to move. There's no way that, but what the devil don't realize. And on the other side of that stone, the father's got the promise. I said, the father's got the promise. The father's got the promise. You think the promise is dead. You think the promise is gone. You think the promise is over. But God's saying, no, it's not. I'm going to move that stone and you'll see my promise is alive and well. Thank y'all. God says, I'll move it out of your way. And promise can be seen again. You see, oftentimes, we come like the women, weeping. Do you know what happened when they found a stone removed? Mary, the mother, left, and Sloan left. But Mary Magdalene, <laughs> she was wandering around the garden. Because <laughs> the Bible says they came in, and they found a stone rolled away, and they went in to look, and his body, now listen to me, his body was not there. They still think he's dead. There's some, <laughs> some of us act like he's dead sometimes. Hello? They still think he's dead. They're, now, if you're the mother of Jesus, you see your son dies on the cross. He's buried. You come and his body's gone. I can understand you being upset. I can almost understand you going home. Sloan, I ain't sure why she left. <laughs> but Mary Magdalene, oh, I like Mary Magdalene. This was a woman of God. But she still thought he was dead. She's wandering around the garden. The Bible said, and Mary stood outside by the tomb weeping. And she wept, in John 20, verses 11 through 17. And she wept, she stooped down and looked at the tomb. She saw the two angels sitting in white, one at the head and the other at the feet, where the body of Jesus was laid. And they said to her, woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know 
where they have laid him. You know what COVID did? COVID made people think the government and the world could take away God. People get mad at the churches because of the way we handle in church. People mad at the situations we find ourselves in. And we're a lot of people, we like Mary, always been taken away. I got news for you. You can't take Jesus away. You can't take Jesus away. She didn't understand. They've taken him away, and I don't know where. Now, she's thinking he's still dead. Now, when she had said this, she turned around. She's walking in the garden, and she sees Jesus standing there, but did not know that it was Jesus. I'm going to tell you, I believe one of the problems in the church today, we've done gotten so upset over everything that's going on around us, we don't even recognize him when he's standing in the room anymore. We've forgotten what it is to recognize Jesus. She didn't know him. She did not know it was him. And Jesus said to her, woman, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? And she, supposing him to be the gardener, <laughs> said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, if you've carried Jesus away, tell me where you have laid Jesus, and I will take him away. Glory to God. She is talking to the resurrected Savior and doesn't even know it. She's standing there talking to him, thinks he's a guard. Tell, just tell me where you've taken Jesus. If you tell me where Jesus is at, I'll go get him and I'll hide him. I'll take him away. Oh, glory to God. You see, that's what happens with the stone of fear and discouragement. It causes us to be blinded to what God wants to do in our lives. Listen to me. And the Bible said that Jesus looked at her and said, Mary. And when he said her name, she said, said Rabboni, which is teacher, and gee, she went to hug him, and he stepped back and said, touch me not, for I have not yet ascended unto my father, but go tell my disciples and Peter, glory to God. I, I like that. She said, go tell my disciples and Peter that I am going unto my father, but I will meet them in Jerusalem not many days. Hence, glory to God. She said, oh Lord, now I see. I got news for somebody today. That stone that was rolled away, it's still rolled away today. You don't have to be discouraged. You don't have to be fearful. Open up your eyes. You'll see Jesus waiting. Hallelujah. The Lord, I guess the stone was also a stone of sickness and death. The stone represented sickness and death, the finality of it. The sickness of the cross, the death that he faced, the pain, the suffering. You see, they came with oils to anoint his body because it was dead. Decay, sickness. Decay and death, sickness go hand in hand. And they were coming to anoint it with scents, frankincense, and myrrh. Now, listen to me. Do y'all remember what he got on his birthday when he was born? Hello? Frankincense, myrrh, and gold. <laughs> y'all didn't get it. <laughs> Man, the gifts they gave him, frankincense and myrrh, were used to anoint the bodies of the dead. And it was very common for the common people because it was only the wealthy and the well-to-do that got embalmed. In Jesus' day, they normally buried you very quickly because of the decay of the body. And because to keep the stench down of the decay of the body, they would anoint the body heavily with frankincense and with myrrh. Glory to God. Do you hear what I'm telling you? They gave him at his birth the things for his burial. I'm, I'm about to go on a tangent and shout and preach to y'all another hour if y'all don't get with me. I said they gave him at his birth the things for his burial. You know, what, well, what does that matter, Pastor? God had the thing already worked out before he ever got here. God had it already planned out before he ever came. God had it already planned out before it was ever stepped foot on the face of the earth. He knew what his son was going to do. Glory to God. Why do you think that God will start you on a journey let you get so far and forget you if God knows where you're going and God gave a plan for your life God knows what to do to get you there he won't start you here without preparation for when you get over here 
My Lord. But pastor, everybody faces sickness and death. Yes, we do. And I got good news for you. But those of us that are saved, washed in the blood of the Lamb, sickness and death has no hold on us. Because I got news for you. This old body's going to lay down one day. But there's going to be a sound of a trumpet. Glory to God. And when the sound of the trumpet sounds, the dead in Christ are going to rise. And those of us that remain will be changed in the moment of a twinkling of eye. You know what's going to happen? Whether I'm dead or whether I'm alive, this body's going to get left. A new body's coming. Glory to God. What are you saying? I'm telling you, there's a new day. There's a coming with no sickness, with no death. There will be no pain, no sorrow. He said, I've moved that stone out of the way. Sickness and death brought him into the grave. The devil said, I've defeated you. But God rolled it away and said, no, you didn't, devil. I've got him a new body. Mary didn't recognize him. He was the same Jesus. In fact, he tells the disciples, Thomas, Thomas didn't believe. And he said, come touch the nail prints in my hands. Come put your hand in my side where the spear was thrust. But honey, there was something different about him. Why? Mary didn't recognize him the first time. Peter, James, and John didn't recognize him the first time when they were on the sea fishing and Jesus appeared on the seashore and they, were, they had caught nothing and they were getting ready to come in and Jesus looked at Peter and said let your nets down on the other side and he said we've been fishing all day we ain't caught nothing you want us to do it again do it one more time and when they throw them over they catch a multitude and their eyes were open and he knew that that was the Lord and he threw himself in the water and swam but Jesus went there from him I'm telling you what happened he had a resurrected body. I'm here to tell you, God give us a promise with the rolling away of the stone. He said, by my stripes you're healed. But if you have to lay down this body here, I got a new body. I got a resurrected life for you. It ain't over. You got hope because I have defeated sickness and death. And finally, there was a stone of doubt and hope. The last thing that stone represented was doubt and hope. Hope had been defeated and doubt that we could ever move past it. The stone was there to block it. It blocks that hope. It makes you doubt. It, you doubt, how do I get there from this point? How do I move forward from this point? The devil says, I put this stone in your way to stop you. But God says, I'm going to move this stone out of the way. Luke 24 said, and they were afraid. And they bowed their faces to the earth and they said, and the angel said to them, why seek you the living among the dead? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spoke to you when he was still in Galilee saying the son of man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified but on the third day he will rise again and then they remembered his words they had doubted and the angel reminded them and said remember his words the stone is removed so that you can remember his words. It has been said the only reason Christian faith is so strong is because of the empty tomb that we believe he rose from it. Can I tell you something? I do not need an empty tomb to prove to me that my Jesus lives. That's for the unbelievers. When that stone was rolled away, they remembered his words. In life, you will face things that will cause you to doubt, and you will face situations that will cause you to lose hope. And many times when we face those things, we're in trouble and we doubt because we have lost our hope but we need to remember 
his words. What is his words, Pastor? I will never leave you nor forsake you. I've got a Savior that will not forget me. He will not leave me. His Spirit is with me all the time. And no matter where I am and no matter where I've gone and no matter what I face, He is there. Hope is there. And as long as I remember His words, doubt is defeated. Doubt is defeated. Peter said, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to His abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Stand with me all over this house. Easter Sunday is a celebration that we remember the resurrection of our Lord and our Savior. Like our church, like many churches, we have a cross hanging in it. It's a symbol to remind us of the gift of salvation, to remind us of the suffering and shame, to remind us of what he did, that we could have a relationship with the Father. I sometimes wish we just had a stone that was rolled to the side. Because I'm gonna tell you something. I'm thankful for what he did on the cross, but I am thankful that God moved that stone of separation, fear, discouragement, defeat out of the way and said, hey, you're not going to hold it back. When Peter finally got to the tomb of Jesus, do you know what he did? The Bible said John ran, and when he got there, he knelt down and looked inside. But the stone was gone, and Peter didn't stop at the door. Peter ran all the way inside and beheld the promise. What do you mean, Pastor? The grave was empty, yep, except for the towel, the napkin, the apron that was folded. As my wife was sharing with me this morning, in the days of Christ, when a master carpenter finished a piece of work and it was completed, he would take the apron off and fold it up and lay it down to the side to symbol that the work was completed, that the job was done. My master carpenter folded that napkin that had wrapped him up, laid it down on the side who found it, the one who denied him three times. It is finished. It is finished. I've done what I set out to do. Thank God for that. This morning, we're going to partake of communion. And my counsel is coming at this time. I can't think of a better time than to take of communion than on Easter Sunday. For what does it represent? It represents the bread and the blood, the Word of God. I'm asking them to go ahead and start passing it out, but before we partake of it, and while they're passing it out, I want us to take a moment to reflect. And I want us to take a moment to pray. The Bible said, Paul said, do not take and eat lightly of the bread and the juice. Communion is a sacrament that we do in remembrance of him. Why? Because on Thursday night, this is what Jesus did with the disciples. He broke bread. He shared the juice of the grape with them. 
and he broke bread with them, communion. It was the last time that he would share with them as man on this earth. The next time he would be his resurrected Savior. He did it because of his great love for us. And he gave us the opportunity to have that right relationship with him. So as they're handing this out this morning, I want you to take a moment and pray with me. And I want you to ask God to search your heart and your life. Can I tell you, that stone was rolled away for each one of us. And maybe you're not where you ought to be with him and maybe you don't, haven't been doing like you should. But today is an opportunity for you to remember him and remember what he did for you. Today is an opportunity to ask him back into your heart and your life. So I want you to pray with me. Father, today I pray that you would search our hearts, search our lives. Father, that you would know us as we, and allow us to know you as you know us. Father, help us to understand you today. Father, I pray that you would speak into our hearts and lives. And Father, if there be one here today or one watching online, Father, that maybe that stone's still in the way. Maybe they're not right with you, Father. Maybe that stone is still separating them from you. I pray, God, that you would remove that stone. I pray that you would roll it aside, God, and let them come forward. Father, let them see the promise. God, I pray that you would speak into their life and let forgiveness and healing and strength flow into their heart and their soul. Search each one of us today, Father, and let us know the truth of who you are. In Christ Jesus' name, we humbly ask it. The Bible said to Jesus on Thursday, took the bread praise the Lord is anybody else having difficulties Tyler I can't get it this morning that's the devil he sealed this bread there, I'm finna get the big piece down there. That's all I got it. Glory to God. I was about to get down there and get the big one. The devil don't want me to take communion. Amen. But the Bible said Jesus took the bread and he broke it. And then he blessed it. Father, I bless this bread, this wafer. We do this today in remembrance of you, for it is symbolic. It is symbolic of your word, of your body that was beaten, bruised, Father, and hung upon an old rugged cross. The flesh that was made, the word that was made flesh among us and dwelt upon this earth, taken from us. And Father, we remember the word of God. And today it is that living word that lives inside of us that leads us and points us to you. So Father, I bless this bread now as we partake of the word, as we remember you. And after he had broke it, he blessed it. And after he blessed it, they did take and they did eat. And then he took the cup. And he looked at it and he said, this wine is the blood of my new covenant. It is the blood that will take away all of your sins. It's the blood that will wash the heart that is steeped in evil and make it white as pure snow. He gave them of the cup. He took it and blessed it. Father, I thank you for the cup. Father, this juice that represents the blood, the blood that was shed on Calvary to forgive me, to forgive me of my sins. For without this blood, I could not be forgiven. Without the shedding of your blood, I could not be free from my sin. But Jesus, you loved us so much 
You loved us so much that you were willing to allow them to beat you, to mock you, to abuse you. You were willing to allow them to nail your hands and your feet to a cross. You were willing to allow them to put crown of thorns upon your head. And you would willingly let your blood drip to this earth that we could have forgiveness of our sins. So, Father, I pray today as we take this cup, let us remember the blood that was shed, that we could be free from our sins. And forgive us, Lord, of our sins. Blot out our iniquities and cover our transgressions. Have mercy on us, Father, as we drink of the cup and remember the blood that was shed for us. And he gave to them, and they did drink. Yes, and said as often as you do this do it in remembrance of me today we partook of communion not to give you a sacrament not out of some tradition but today we have done it that we can remember him on this Easter remember him and what he did for us would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise? Praise the Lord. Happy Easter to all of you. Thank you for being here today, being a part of our service. I hope and pray that God has blessed you. I hope and pray that God has spoken to you. I hope and pray that if you don't have a home church, you'll come back and be with us any and every opportunity you can. We're so thankful for what God is doing in our midst. And from the Golden Isles Church of God, my staff and myself, we wish all of you a happy Easter. and We love you and appreciate you. Justin, would you dismiss us in prayer? Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your grace. God, we thank you for your mercy. And God, we thank you for your word today as we celebrate a risen Savior. God, we thank you and I pray, Father God, that those stones as Pastor spoke about, God, God, that we would take that with us and remind ourselves, God, constantly that you can take those stones and you can roll them away. So God, help us to put our trust in you in all things. Help us to surrender to you in all things and let your will be done in all things. And God, we just give you the honor, we give you the glory and the praise. In Jesus' name, the church family said, amen, amen. and amen. Amen. God bless. Don't forget tomorrow night, prayer from 6 to 7 for you to come out. Youth, 6.30 to the midnight. Midnight Madness come out for a wonderful time. I called him and told him.